Hi, my name is Marcia Kish, and I'm a blended learning expert. I have been using and implementing blended learning for the last 12 years. I have started a blended learning high school. In fact, it was a hybrid blended learning high school here in Ohio. I have been a blended learning coach traveling around the country teaching teachers just like you how to implement blended learning into their classroom environments. Today, I'm going to give you just a quick definition of what is blended learning and what that looks like. So let's get started. So I, over the years, I have created a deployment plan, a rollout systematic approach of deploying blended learning that allows teachers and students to understand how to learn in a different way. We're not reinventing the wheel with blended learning. We're just using the technology. We're using the best practices and allowing students to take ownership of their learning. Now more so than ever, we really need to prepare these students for the year 2040 and what that looks like. We're in this pandemic and we realize that the use of technology is going to enhance the way that we work and the way that we learn. In fact, look at some of the jobs. I love this. Somebody's going to be a drone traffic controller. How cool is that? But as we go through this whole pandemic, people are now using blended learning as a term that everybody should know. But I'm not for sure if everybody understands what blended learning means. So I'm going to use a definition by Michael Horn and the Christensen Institute. And the blended learning definition is this. Allowing students to work at their own pace, place, and path driven by data. So this is a definition, and if you want to read the book, I definitely would look into the Michael Horn book. He gives a really good explanation of why blended learning is important. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to break apart pace, place, and path, and data and show you what it looks like in a classroom. Note that these photos were all before the pandemic, so social distancing wasn't a thing when these videos were taken. But at the same time, you can get an idea of what that might look like in a social distancing classroom, a hybrid, or even a virtual environment. So pace. Pace is the ability for students to work through the content at their own rate, meaning that if they get done, they move to the next learning studio. This little guy just got done doing one of his activities. He's going to mark it off on his checklist. He shows the teacher he got it completed. His buddy's like, dude, you're leaving me? He's like, yeah, I'm going to the next studio. Those little balls that are on the table, those are timers. The students set a timer for amount that the teacher thinks it should take them to complete that activity. If they get done early, they just move to the next studio. If they need a little bit of extra time, then they can stay there. But that timer is kind of a guideline. So this is what he was doing. He was using what we call a progression board. He is moving his little name from one studio to the next. This gives a clue to the teacher and to the other students that, oh, students are getting their work done. I need to pick up the pace or, whoa, I'm moving way too fast. So this is what, a great way to help manage pace in your classroom when you're deploying this in your virtual hybrid or your social distancing environment. So pace. The next one is path. I love path. Path is the ability for students to pick what studio they want to work on first, second, and third. So the teacher provides them with a checklist. This checklist is given to the students at the beginning of the week or beginning of the two-day checklist, and the students go and they choose what they want to do. She's getting logged in. In fact, she's working on her checklist before the timer even, or before the bell even rings. So there's no more bell to bell. It's when you get into the classroom, you start working on the items on your checklist. Path, allowing them to pick what learning studio they feel is the best for them. This is an example of a checklist. I love this checklist. This checklist is a four day checklist. The teacher will start on Monday, and the students will be going to a mini lesson, independent practice, digital content, and of course, a future ready activity. When they are done, they're going to highlight that activity on the color of the day. So anything they complete on Monday is highlighted in blue. Then on, on Tuesday, the teacher will say, okay, anything you do on Tuesday is highlighted in yellow. This becomes a good cue to show the students that all the work that they completed during that four days. And at the end of the week, if they're missing something, it's quickly easy to see, oh, I need one more independent practice to complete. Path, you get the ability to pick what you want to do first, second, and third, except for the mini lesson. So just be careful when you do one of our workshops, we'll explain more about why the students can't pick the mini lesson. Place, place is ability for students to work online, offline, standing up, sitting down. This is where technology falls in. Technology is not replacing the teacher, but rather it is the second teacher of the classroom. 
Place allows those students to determine what works best for them. Place in a classroom, in a social distancing classroom, might look something like this, where you have chairs, you spread them apart six feet, and you are working with them in that small group, in a comfortable setting. Or a place might look like this, where this teacher found these chairs in the Facebook Marketplace, and she has it set up so the students can work in a place that works best for them. Remember, technology is where you might find place. But place is also like a cave environment where you have to get your work done. So you isolate yourself inside of the classroom so you can focus on getting that independent work done. Blended learning is all about showcasing how to take ownership of your learning. So when we do pace, place, and path, we're really encouraging the students to really take ownership, to really use their passion to drive their experience, and to really become this amazing learning environment for the students. Last but not least, let's talk about data. As we go through the three phases of blended learning, we realize that data is a key essential part. Data is collected from the online technology tools, from the teacher's small group instruction, as well as even independent work. This teacher is going over the checklist one-on-one -on -one with the students, asking them, how are you doing? Do you need extra help? Do you need extra support? And then he gives reteachable moments right there on the spot. Most data meetings happen each week and they last about one to two minutes long. I know, sounds crazy, but again, when you attend one of our workshops, we'll explain how to roll out those data meetings. Data meetings are really looking at the students' growth over time and how they can be personalizing their education. This is an example of a second grade classroom. I love this teacher. She had 48 students, two teachers in the classroom, 48 students, and every week she sat down and personalized each checklist for the students. As soon as they did that, the students knew exactly what to work on. They knew their personalized goal, and it was all based off of that data from the digital content, from the small group instructions, and what they completed from the week before. This teacher and her co-teacher had this experience and they had the data points before they hung out with Marcia Kish. These were their scores in the year 2018. They had their second graders, 76% of their second graders passed math, 85% of their second graders passed ELAR, and 70% passed writing. That's great. Out of 48 kids, that's pretty impressive. After they allowed the students to work their own pace, place, path, and using that data to drive instruction, what do you think happened to those scores? Well, I hope you're saying they're going up because that's exactly what they did. Their scores went up. All 48 students passed math. 100% of them passed ELAR and 100% of them passed writing. The data showing that this type of blended learning environment works. I wish we would have had standardized tests last year because I know even more schools would have had that success feeling of look at the hard work and the payoff that it gets. The definition of blended learning, allowing students to work their own pace, place, and path, and everything is driven by data. I hope that if you have any questions, you can contact me, and we'd be more than willing to set up a mini workshop or even do just a quick little coaching session with you. Thanks, guys.